This time on Square Body Stuff, we're changing out valve springs. Hey, welcome back to Square Body Stuff. Uh, in this video, we're going to go over changing out valve springs on a small block Chevy, which it really doesn't matter what kind of motor you've got. It's pretty much all the same. Uh, but we're working on a, a 350 Chevy. I'm going to change out the valve springs while the heads are still on the engine. Uh, there's a few different ways to do it. I'm going to go over a couple different ways that I've done, and I know it works. All right, I'm going to go over with you uh, a couple of different ways to change out valve springs on a, on an engine that has the heads on the block. Uh, of course, you, if you had the heads off, it's a lot easier because you can have the big C-clamp type uh, valve spring compressor. But it, if the heads are on the block and you don't want to pull the heads off, uh, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to do that. Um, you can take get an adapter to thread into your spark plug hole it's got an air chuck fitting on it thread into your uh, spark plug hole use compressed air to hold the air into the cylinder that will keep the valves seated uh, while you take the valve spring off uh, the other way to hold the valve in place is to take a piece of rope uh, and this is actually how I done the rest of the seven cylinders. I already got seven of them done. I saved the last one for the video. Uh, the rest of them, I, I use this here, just a piece of rope. I bring the, the piston up to almost top dead center and just shove this rope inside the spark plug hole. Make sure you got all your gook and everything from around the spark plug hole cleaned off so you don't get your rope all dirty. You know, I mean, it's, it stayed pretty clean through all seven of them. Shove this rope inside the spark plug hole. Uh, then turn your crank shaft over to where it compresses that up a little bit. You don't want to hammer on it, put a lot of pressure. But what it does is that rope holds the valves in place while you compress the valve spring to let the keepers loose. Uh, so I guess I can show you that that way first. And on this camera over here, I'm moving a little bit, and I've got my ratchet set up with my crank turning apparatus that I've made. It's just an old uh, crankshaft gear welded to a piece of pipe, and I've got a square hole in it welded together, and it serves as a purpose or a tool to turn the crankshaft. And you can watch your crankshaft. You know whenever your piston's at top dead center or not. I'm taking this one a little bit below top dead center. It really doesn't matter which way you turn it at this point. And I just feed this rope through there. There's probably maybe five feet of rope, three-eighths rope. I don't know which kind of rope you'd call it, climbing rope. About any type of rope that'll fit in the, in the spark plug hole will work. I feed it through there. 
And it just kind of fills up the cylinder. Leave enough where you can get a hold of it whenever you get done. And then turn your crankshaft the other way. A little pressure on it, you can feel that it's compressing that. And I mean, your rope ain't gonna go anywhere because it's compressed in there. Then you could compress your valve spring and don't have to worry about your valve dropping down into your cylinder. Because that could be a big mess. Then you'd have to pull a cylinder head if your valve drops down, down, down into the cylinder. So the next step would be choosing which, which style of compressor you're going to use. Now I've got two different styles of compressors. I've got the lever style. You see here, it's got the hole here that, uh, I'm not sure which camera here. Let me get this camera moved back in the right direction. You take that lever and a nut, uh, and actually this nut here is a spare one, because these nuts for the rocker arm nuts are, uh, are crimped, so they'll hold tight, but I'll take a tap and I'll run a tap down through that to cut those threads to where it doesn't hold tight, it'll just spin on like a regular nut. Um, so you can just spin this back down on there. And I'll use my impact. Run it down, and there you go, it pops up. Now, it's not always going to pop up like that for you, nice and easy. You can press a little bit more. And pull those out. You can use a magnet, however you want to do it, to pull them out to get a hold of them. So now, now your valve is free of your, your keeper. Back the nut off. I'll set that right there. And there you go your valve springs off. Now the springs, these are stock springs. I'm replacing them with, uh, they're just Z28 valve springs. I got off of eBay. Uh, you go to eBay, type in Z28 valve springs, set your search to lowest price and shipping. Get the cheapest ones, they're all the same thing, pretty much, what I've found out. Uh, the wire themselves are a little bit thicker, they're a little bit taller, a little bit bigger in diameter, uh, but they'll handle up to, I think, 500 thousandths lift or a little bit more. Uh, the cam we're using right now is 470 thousandths, so we're good to go. Another thing I want to note is the the valve seals, uh, someone's already cut these heads before they take these positive type umbrella seals. Uh, they don't have the little O-ring seal that goes on the valve stem itself. So that was a big, a big bonus to find that on this motor that uh, someone's already done the work to put these kind of seals on there so I don't have to worry about it. <clears throat> and Put the new valve spring on there, which they're quite a bit stiffer. Put your compressor back on there. I'm hoping I'm getting getting this on both cameras. I got two cameras going. It's kind of confusing for my simple mind. But you can run it down a little ways. that, get your keepers, of course they're tapered, As you can see they're tapered, the, the tapered side goes down, if that makes sense, clip it in there, 
grab the other one, press it, clip it in there. Good to go on that one. Back the nut off. And your washer gets stuck sometimes. Boom, there you go. Valve spring changed. It didn't drop down to the cylinder because we've got a rope in there. It wasn't hard to break loose. Some of them are kind of hard to break loose. You may need to, you know, tap it a little bit with a hammer. I mean, don't wail on it. Just tap it a little bit with a hammer to get those keepers broke loose from, uh, from the valve spring. Uh, the next way I want to show you is I'm going to pull this rope out. I'm going to turn my crankshaft a little bit to get some get the pressure off this rope. I'll pull this rope out. We don't need it. I'm going to use this uh, this tool here I showed you earlier. Thread it into the spark plug hole. Uh, you can get get these at I think you get them off eBay you and at your local parts store you might have to order them actually I looked for we want the parts store this morning they didn't have one I just happened to find mine to be able to use it for this video tighten it up a little bit use shop air and it'll spin your crankshaft around to bottom dead center so your whole cylinder is full of air the problem is is if you break it loose and get your keepers off and your valve drops down for some reason you break that seal that valve could drop down into your cylinder then you'll have to pull the head off to get your valve out of there so, which way is better? I can't tell you. I'm just trying to show you different ways of doing this. So right now we've got 120 PSI in the cylinder. You can hear it leaking by a little bit. I'm not gonna use my lever. I'm gonna use this tool, a valve spring compressor. You clip this around the, the spring here. And I've welded a, I've slotted a, a, an old socket and welded it to the handle where I don't have to sit there and crank it by hand. I could hook it into my impact or ratchet and crank it down. So I get it started on the valve spring. Started on there by hand. I'm thinking you can see it with that, this camera here. So what I'll do is speed the process up, use my impact, and it compresses that valve spring pretty easy. This is probably the preferred method, other than sometimes getting your keepers out with big fat fingers like I've got can be a pain, but you can always use a magnet. And there you go, there's your valve spring. I like to kind of, actually I like to keep it down on there so it don't spring off or fly across the shop. Let it loose. Get the new spring. Set it on there, back this all the way off. Get it started with some pressure. Use some impact.
run it down. Set my keeper in there. Another thing you can do with these keepers is put a little bit of a, a dab of heavy grease on them and that'll hold them in there. Sometimes it'll help. But once you get them, once you get them in there, whether you got grease or not, you can, with this way of doing it, you can pull this compressor back up towards you to where it gets those keepers uh, seated in there. And then back it off. <clears throat> and there we go. There's another valve spring change. Just a different way of doing it. You can use the rope method. You can use the air comp compressed air method. Uh, screw clamp. Or the lever type. They make some other type of uh, tools that actually bolt onto the, the studs that you could use to, to do it. There's, there's several different ways to do it. These are two methods that I have tools for and, and, and ways to show you to change cylinder or change valve springs on the cylinder head while it's bolted to the motor. You could do this in the truck, out of the truck, it doesn't matter. Uh, the last thing I like to do once I get, once I get the keepers in, Kind of bump them with a hammer, something kind of soft. That way, it kind of seats those keepers. Of course, it's it's popping pretty loud because that compressed air is holding those valves closed. And that's about all there is to changing out valve springs on these. And this will work on. Small block, big block, Chevy, Ford, Dodge, whatever motor you've got pretty much. Um, hopefully this will help you out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll keep coming up with some more videos for you guys.